Greetings, everybody. Welcome back. Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to live guided slow burning on first Fridays. Feel free to share in the chat where you're joining from. And we'll give folks a few minutes to gather. We'll give folks a few minutes to gather. I like to give people until about five after. So I'm excited to be joining you guys all today um, from my backyard here in St. Albans. And I'm really hoping you can hear some of the activity around me. When you come in, please remember to mute. Um, we're gonna use the chat as much as we can because that helps save bandwidth. It also helps with the recording. So I have a little um, black cap chickadees right next to me right now in a viburnum that I planted. Welcome, welcome everybody. I'm so glad you're joining me today. It's great to be back. I was really looking forward to this month because I knew there would be a big shift and change from what we experienced last month. It's kind of playing out around me right now, which is really nice. So if you look, my, my feeders are here and then I have another feeder on my house, which is right here. And then there's this large shrub and garden just to my right that's out of the camera screen. Um, I put my bird feeders back up because I'm in a, urban area, even though we did have a bear move through our city this year. It's happened two years in a row now, but um, I've been, I put the feeder back up after the bear left the neighborhood. Oh my gosh, is that who I think it is at the feeder right now? I'm going to slowly turn. Hey Cardinal, what's up? Okay, so Keep your eyes on the feeder because there's been um, a rose-breasted grosbeak family too. I know it's kind of far away, but this is as close as I thought I could get without disturbing the birds. So let's see who's here. We've got folks joining us from Ontario, Topsom, hi, hi Shirley in Virginia, um, Stacy, Miwok, Colorado. Um, Saxons River, California. Yeah, Martha, you guys in Montpelier, right? A little bit more action. You know, the bears here in St. Albans, Vermont, um, there hadn't been a bear in the city limits. Um, last year, everybody was saying within the last 40 years. And so there's this individual bear that's showed up again, typically, and it's been early spring. And so we took our feeders in for that, but when the baby birds started showing up again, I couldn't help but put the feeders back out at least during the day and then take them in at night. I'm pretty confident the bear's not gonna come through a yard full of screaming kids <laughs> during the daytime. All right, so we're at about 12.03 and um, we'll give people just a couple more minutes. I'm really glad folks are chiming in where they're from. Maybe you want to share some of your usual suspects right now. My, oh, there's another one. Okay, good. Those guys are getting comfortable coming back in. So I'm hearing them right above me. So right above me, I'm just about um, tucked under uh, a big spruce tree. Um, and it's a spot of the birds to go and um, open seeds after they've grabbed them, those that don't stay right at the feeder. And so I'm hoping that you'll get some flyovers 
during today's session as well. So welcome, welcome everyone. We're, we're getting close to getting started, please. Yeah, you guys know how to use the chat. So Common Grapple was the one that was just checking at me. Um, did that come into the screen because a black cap chick just landed on me? Kind of fun. Um, feel free to drop your usual suspects right now in my yard. We have um, black cap chickadee family, tufted titmouse family, rose breasted grosbeak family, common grackle family. And I haven't been able to figure out if the Northern Cardinals have young yet. Definitely have a Cardinal pair here, but haven't noticed the young. All right, we got a few more people joining. I'm gonna do my best to try to keep letting people in as we go. But typically as we get to about 10 or 15 after and we get into things a little bit more, it's really hard to let folks in. So just know that if that happens to you on any given month, that the videos um, will be posted on my YouTube page um, and you can catch up with us there in that way and get some of the exercises that we were gonna do for this week. So things you might wanna have, I have a nice cold bottle of water because it's 80 something degrees here in Vermont today. I have my journal. I also have something kind of cool to share with all of you. Today, a book that I've been enjoying. All right. Laura's got a Nuttall's woodpecker. All right. That is, I don't even know that woodpecker. I'm like, and where, I'm gonna scroll up and see if I can figure out where Laura's from. Yep, California, there we go. That's why I don't have them here. <laughs> nice, there we go. Hi, Christine, thank you. Oh, it's good to have you here again. All right, good, people are sharing what they've got going on. All right, I'm gonna close the participant box. We're at about six after. I'm gonna share the, the quote for this week. Um, so I know the world's been pretty rough lately um, and it just doesn't seem to let up. And um, a lot of times my slow burning practice is the thing that brings me back to a really calm place. And also some of these different authors that I've been sharing with you to um, help out a lot. And so this quote comes from um, a book um, that's among all the books that I'm trying to read all simultaneous, right? simultaneously right now. It's called If Women Rose Rooted by Sharon Blackie. And she is an author and scientist and psychologist and mythologist from the UK. She's really pretty amazing. And she writes in this book of hers, there are times when you need the extremity of rock, the hardness of an old cold place against which you can measure yourself. There are times when you need to retreat to the wilderness, but there are times when you need the subtle flow of a river, the song of a waterfall and the deep slow presence of trees. Times when you need to return. There are times for holding on and times for letting go. And I think I probably could write a little addendum to this about there are times when you need birds as well. And I've been taking a lot of um, joy from the families of birds who are visiting um, my yard lately. And so that's kind of what I would like to focus on um, today in our practice is thinking about um, little families of birds. And I don't mean taxa, taxa, taxonomically, <laughs> there we go, but um, just the little posses of, of fledglings and parents moving across the landscape, moving through our yards, using them in different ways. Um, even in the city right now, thinking about when I walk downtown, listening to um, starlings begging from small little cavities and cracks in the sides of buildings or in pipes, things like that. House sparrows too are like that. 
and trying to locate where they are. Or the other day at the beach with my kids, hearing the calls of some kind of family of babies and finally discovering a cavity in a tree right near where we were um, of woodpeckers. And it's the same spot that we go back to over and over again each time we visit this beach. Um, and we haven't been there this week. And I'm, I'm nervous because maybe the babies have fledged because the past two weeks, the parents have had to go into the cavity to feed them and then come back out again. And then last week, the parents weren't going into the cavity anymore and the babies were at right at that front opening and um, feeding right there with their, with their parents, bringing mouthfuls of food back to them. So I think um, today, one of the questions I have for you is how well do you know the bird families in your neighborhood? If you can pick one of your usual suspects right now and close your eyes, can you see the male bird? Can you see the female bird? If there is a difference, if they are dimorphic and have a difference between male and female. And can you picture in your mind what a fledgling looks like? Or what a fledgling as you have just reminded me, thank you, Chickadee, what a fledgling sounds like or how a fledgling behaves. When we talk about getting to know birds and building this thread between us and the usual suspects that we have in our yard. And sometimes we shut off when we just get to know the male and maybe we don't need to get to know the female because she looks the same as the male, but there really are other little behaviors and things that we can key in on that will allow us to get to know that bird a little bit better and get to know the whole family. Okay, so that is kind of the focus for today. And we'll start in just a minute here. We're gonna do like regular piece of um, getting relaxed in your space and feeling grounded. Guess what, today, da, 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 I'm barefoot. So this is another great practice is when you can take your shoes off. Oh my gosh, I think of all the places um, that I can walk comfortably with my shoes off um, and just how, right? We don't always get a chance to touch birds but we do have a chance um, to touch the trees that the birds are coming into or to ground ourselves um, in the land with our toes. All right, I think somebody else just tried to come in. There we go, we're gonna get that person in. Welcome, if you're just joining us, I'm just about to start with the, the guided meditation today. Please make sure you're muted as you come in. And I'm gonna share one more thing. Um, before we move on. So this is another book that has become very popular and is a favorite in a lot of um, participants in my slow birding classes. This is called Ornotherapy by my new friend, um, Holly Merker. And um, she's wonderful. And I really hope you get a chance to um, check out her book. Um, I picked an exercise out of here. It's number 35, it's called Birds Go Straight to the Heart. And I think it ties in really well with um, the quote from Sharon Blackie today. And I think it also really goes well with um, this voyeuristic feeling that we sometimes have, especially during breeding season where you're watching um, the mating displays or the courtship displays or courtship itself and you feel very voyeuristic. Um, and it's kind of special to be able to have some of these moments with, um, hi, there you are, where the chickadees are back in the shrub right next to me, um, with these families of birds. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of something out of here too. All right, but to get started, um, oh, I'm just going to do this. Mm -hmm. 
and take a couple of nice, really deep breaths. I'm like gonna just wiggle my feet into the grass and remind myself to drop my shoulders because I hold a lot of tension in my shoulders. I'm gonna stretch my neck a little bit. Feel free to close your eyes if you want. If you're not comfortable closing your eyes, another great practice when you first get on your sit spot is to just gaze downward. So you're kind of limiting your vision and allowing some of your other senses to take over. Well, I'm going to stretch a little bit more here. <laughs> I know, Chickadee, I hear you. Hi. I hope Chickadee sticks around. And we'll be able to, hopefully you'll be able to hear the whole family here too. A couple more deep breaths. You get to be here right now. And all you need to do is focus on the birds that are in front of you. Feel free to um, step away from your computer if you want. Bring your phone with you outside. Um, honestly, you can do whatever you want during the 20 minutes that we're going to go for here. Um, and just follow whatever the birds are calling you to follow. Sometimes people write poetry, sometimes they use the prompts, sometimes they don't, and that's okay. Whatever you really want it to be. Um, so let's just, um, we're gonna soften our gaze and we're gonna take in our whole surrounding. I just want you to scan slowly from left to right or right to left. Just taking the whole landscape. I'm laughing because now I'm seeing um, Robin in my neighbor's yard as I start to scan. I'm gonna look at my house now because that's where I'm facing. And then I get to get back to the good stuff as I kind of come across here to where the feeders are and the shrubs are. Mm. We'll come back to center and stretch a little bit more and then gaze up. Ooh, don't forget to look skyward maybe arc from one side to another. Yeah, there are chimney swifts today. I haven't heard them at all today. Hmm. That makes me wonder if they're busy with young in their chimneys that they have chosen here in the city. Ooh, try to twist all the way back around. All right. And now we're gonna, we're gonna, do some ear cleaning, which I like to do. And I want you to, if again, if you're not comfortable closing your eyes, that's totally fine. And just look downward. I knew this was gonna happen. We have a really hot day here and it's not on the radar that it's gonna rain, but it's starting to. And I was pretty smart. And I brought this so I can protect my computer and myself. All right mainly the computer. Okay, so back to ear cleaning. So ear cleaning is an exercise that comes from acoustic ecologist R. Murray Schaefer. And basically what we're gonna do is try to push our awareness, listening outward from us. And we're gonna listen to things that are the farthest away. And then we're gonna slowly come back in and try to listen to things that are closer. Can you hear my chickadees right now? My chickadee buddies. You probably can hear the rain on my umbrella that's starting just a little bit, drops here and there. And I want you to listen so close that you can hear your breath too. And take a couple more breaths again. I got all tense because I was like, oh, the rain's coming. I have to relax again. All right, the computer's protected. I'm all set. The chickadees are still here. I can hear my neighbor's weed whacker. And in some other sessions, we've talked about how we can push those 
human made sounds, the anthrophony off to the side and allow the biophony, the sounds of the birds to come back in. Once we recognize and we listen without judgment to those sounds that we might think are disturbing, we kind of have a better chance of letting them go. All right. So I'm gonna do a little narration of what I'm hearing and hopefully you guys can hear this too. And they're above me in the spruce and they're to the right of me and they're in the feeder. Hi, you guys. Oh, this is my posse of um, family of chickadees. So one of the questions I asked you before when you were closing your eyes and thinking about your usual suspects is how well do I know what a family of black capped chickadees looks like? I'm closing my eyes again as I'm trying to picture them. And with black capped chickadees, right, the male and the female look the same. But there are behaviors that we can watch for that'll help us tell the difference. I'm not aware of any of those yet for black capped chickadee, but with song sparrow, I learned that earlier in the season when they're building nests, um, the female is the one that carries all the nesting material and does all the building and the male follows close behind her. Um, and so that's one way that you can tell song sparrows apart it has to be in that window of time when they're building nests though. And with other species, when we move into the feeding time, sometimes it's one or the other or both that will feed. And so right now, these guys are fledged. I think there's, right, there's the two adults and I think I have about four, three to four babies that are with this set of adults. Okay, so there's the foam voice of the adult chickadee, right? Chickadee doing that contact call to stay in touch with one another. Now the young ones are, there. It's a little bit harsher in terms of its sound. It's like, and then they do this. So they're starting to get into their adult voices, but that's how we can tell there are juveniles. So juveniles also look a little bit scruffier and their voices are a little bit different. That one's doing something really interesting. I'm going to turn slowly and see if I can. I can see all the dark clouds behind me. I'm going to put this down for a minute because it stopped. The rain stopped. So chickadees I've gotten to know really well, and it's taken me a couple of years to do that. And that's been right here at my sit spot, which is literally like five feet away on the doorstep here is where I first heard the begging calls of juveniles. And then the evolution of that into um, the adult chickadee dee dee. And this, there's one that's singing. There we go. So all their different voices, song, and then the contact, chickadee dee dee. You almost sound like you have it there, young one. Um, and the other thing that I like is there's, we've been watching the young here in the backyard that um, are begging for food still. Have you seen this wing quiver that happens? And they sit and they kind of bounce around and chase after the parents, especially after they come and get a seed from the feeder. They come into the tree. And this week, the adults are starting to move away from them with the seed and not let them get it right away. And so they're trying, feels like, it feels like, I think they're trying to encourage the young ones to whoop, go to the feeder. So I'm curious, what are you hearing? Let's see. And says, bird sound is amazing. Good, yeah, it is all over the neighborhood right now. 
Oh, Joanne has robins that hatched this morning. Great, Joanne. You'll have a really good opportunity to watch that arc of change from nestling to fledgling to juvenile on the ground feeding with the adults. Joanne's got fourth hatching. Phoebe, tree swallow, chickadee, and robin. Common yellow throat is on, on a nest right now. We are waiting for a nest in the hedgerow back there, that tall hedgerow behind the feeders is all honeysuckle and we've slowly been removing it with our neighbor um, to replace it with cedars, but there were baby robins in there last week. So we're trying to give them another week before we pull those down and replant. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, um, let's try, I wanna try this. Um, this activity from number 35 from um, Holly Marker's book, Ornotherapy, um, it's called Birds Go Straight to the Heart. Um, and so let's try this right now. I want you again to, um, we're gonna close our eyes or gaze downward. And I'm gonna count backwards from five. And what I want you to do when I get there is to kind of do that whole landscape scan again slowly and just do like a quick inventory of what are you seeing? What are you hearing? What are you smelling? And how does it feel, right? How does it feel in your body? As you listen to the nut hatches, see like, I'm like already like, there's this like little like, um, almost like a, a vibration, a joy vibration. Maybe that's what it is when I make time for my sit spot, okay? All right, so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna have you close your eyes or you can gaze downward if closing your eyes is uncomfortable. And I'm gonna count backwards from five and I'm gonna let you look and I'll give you another prompt. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so the next part of this challenge is to try to discover three new things. And in about, I'll give you like maybe three minutes to do this and we'll, so those three new things can be a new sound, a new smell, I love this part, or a new feature on a bird that you know well. So if you have a bird in your sights and you can find something new about that bird, see if you can see something new in that bird. So something new to see, new to hear. <laughs> There's my new one. And maybe a new feature on a bird that you know well. If you get that, any of those, feel free to type them into the box, but we're going for three, okay? I'm gonna grab my notebook. My 
three new things. My first two are vocalizations that are new that weren't here when we first started together. So I just, the uh, family of chickadees just came back in again. And, um, and it really just flew right over my head. Okay, there's something in there. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, though. Again, I was just kind of landing on. This is the best sit spot ever, okay? I'm just gonna tip my camera. Like literally right above my head are the branches. This, the, it's the spot where the chickadees like to perch to bust open the sunflower seeds. Yes, I know you guys, hi. <laughs> okay, come on back in and let's do some sharing. So, right, the idea here is to just get into some deeper observation, nurturing your inner voyeur <laughs> a little bit for some different stuff. Um, so, put some things in the chat that you maybe noticed. And it's okay if you're noticing stuff too that's not bird related because sometimes there aren't birds around. So, um, one of the things that, that I noticed, I gotta put this down. Um, have these really bright pink peonies that have um, gone past flower and it's all the, it's like the inside parts. And I don't know if that's, now I'm gonna have to, hi, I hear you. Do you want me to talk about you instead of the peonies? Probably. <laughs> um, but the inside of the peonies are like this sh nice sharp yellow on, with the, outside of the pink, looks really cool, almost like a firework. Um, two new sounds that I heard were American goldfinch, like right above me, and then, okay, the whole family just flew over my head. <laughs> and the house friends next door, this is my favorite time of year. Don't let anybody tell you that summer is slow for birding because it's not, it's so, not, 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 it's exciting. Um, and then the third thing that I saw, that I hope you'll look forward to on your fledgling birds that are cruising around, is the, the grumpy gape. So baby birds um, have this little fleshy part at the gape of their mouth, because um, the bill hasn't developed completely yet. And it tends to be a, like a yellow color or sometimes a pink color. Um, and so today was the first time. Ah, 
stuff that I've seen at the Sierra and the Chickadees because they're literally close enough to me right now for me to see um, with a long enough gaze with them. <gasps> okay, so here's the other thing that just happened. I have this um, really cool tall plant called um, finch cup. Some people call it gold finch cup. And the way that the leaves clasp the stem creates a little cup at the base right where they meet. Um, and it holds water. Um, and so we had rain last night, so there's water in there. And I just watched a chickadee drink water out of that little cup part of the plant where the leaf joins the stem. Okay, this is like by far the best snowboarding sit spot first Friday session I have had in a really long time. So let's see what you guys are noticing. So the challenge was discover three new things, a new sound, a new smell, a new feature on a bird you know well. Um, I'll add somebody new on the soundscape. Um, maybe a behavior you haven't seen in a while. So let's see. Laura says, Laura says, I've seen that. And I'm, I'm thinking that popped up right when I was talking about the gape. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, Annette has some um, really lovely questions. So before we've talked about, I wonder, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of is three other great prompts to use. So um, she says the oven bird and red-eyed vireo are persistently singing. The male cat bird is methodically going from one shrubby area in my yard to another. Is it foraging? I gotta scroll down. Is it doing it to defend its territory both at once? Um, and she's noticed that cat birds can poop on the wing. Nice job, I love that. All right, let's see what else people are sharing. Agree, the red-eyed, okay, yes. Yeah, so we have some agreement about red-eyed vireo and oven bird, super vocal throughout the day. That's so nice. Um, Laura from California is listening and seeing several house finches and gold finches fighting for a perch at the feeder. Uh-huh. Anna's hummingbird sitting at the hummingbird feeder and resting on oh, a young crow in the distance. Great. Laura's hearing a cardinal. Mu has three downy siblings. One is spreading its wings to keep the other two from the new cedar block. Just already learning how to jostle for position, right? Which they probably got down really well in that cavity that they, they have fledged from. D -d 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 -d. If you were talking about woodpeckers, which I, I was taking downy. That's downy woodpecker, maybe. Downy siblings is different. Stacy says, goldfinch wipes beak on branch. My yard and native flowers provide lots of food for birds. Hearing some youngins begging. Yeah, that's so good. I love to follow the young ones. Okay. Mew, I, Mew, Mew, or Mew, I'm not sure how to say your name, so I'm sorry if I'm butchering it. She says, yes, downy woodpecker. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm gonna return back to our quote here for today. There we go, Moo, thank you so much for letting me know how to say your name properly. I'm gonna go back to sharing screen. So I'm going to, you know what? I will post this quote on my Facebook page today. Sometimes I like to take quotes with me to, to different sit spots. And again, right, when you develop a sit spot practice in your yard, it's then something that you can take on the road with you. So I encourage you to do that. Um, and to trust that mother nature is going to come through for you with whatever you need. If it's, you know, a rocky, cold place or something that's slow and flowing. Um, yesterday, I had the privilege of working with 20 teachers through um, a natural history session at North Branch Nature Center. Hi. Very loud. Hi, Flicker. 
there we go. It's like we're coming in. Um, and we did a river sit in the afternoon and all brought our folding chairs out and spread out um, along the north branch of the river there. And I was the last to sit down. And I sat myself in a brushy bank on the edge of the river above where most of the, the teachers were sitting down below and planted myself in the sun and it was really hot. And I was beginning to be like, oh, you, you didn't pick a good spot and this is gonna be terrible. And now you have to sit here for 30 minutes and try to come up with something. And you know what? I really didn't need to fret too much at all because um, the spot that I had picked was just above where a lot of birds like to come to bathe. And so after a while, they all got comfortable and they were dropping down over my head to go down to the embankment to bathe. And then there was a, a, a scraggly branch, set of branches that had tumbled down, broken off the side of a tree. And that's where they came to preen and to fluff um, and to sit and to dry out in the sun. So trust, trust in mother nature, trust in the birds um, and trust in this practice that you're building. I wanna thank you all for coming and joining me. Um, I'm just gonna fat forward that slide so you know how to be in touch. Next month, I'm really excited to share that I'll be live from Shelburne Museum. Um, it is their first Friday, free first Friday evening program there. And I'll be spending the day in the morning with the day camp. And then I'll be doing our live session um, from the museum, outdoor parts of the museum there. And then that evening we'll be launching um, uh, the new project that I've been working with Shelburne Museum on, which is called Birding the Museum. And it's a self-guided pamphlet um, to bird different collections of the museum in a slow birding way. And there's even some sit spots um, outside uh, the buildings where you can stop and pause. And there's a, a guided sit spot practice in this pamphlet as well. So I'll be leading an outing, um, a walk there that night to um, use the pamphlet together and to do a guided sit spot session. So big day at Shelmer Museum on the first Friday of August. I hope you all can join me. If you liked today and you um, would like to make a donation, I do this for free because I want lots of people to be able to join me and it helps me in my own practice. Um, but if this was of value to you and you'd like to make a donation, you can go back to the Slow Birding um, First Friday page and scroll down to the bottom. Um, donations recently I've had, um, I always try to let folks know that if you can't afford my programs, you can reach out to me and I'll find a way to um, cover the cost to make it more affordable. Um, and I have two folks that are looking for um, support for intro to slow birding coming this fall. Um, and so your donations will go to help support them participating in the class. And then um, past donations just recently went to two accessible um, outings to help pay for the permitting to use um, land owned by um, the state. Um, I had to buy some permits to take folks on an accessible boardwalk, but it was totally worth it. Um, you wouldn't believe how active 600 feet of boardwalk can be. And we were able to provide a space for folks who had mobility issues to participate. So thank you all so much for your donations. It's been really great to be able to pay it forward for some other folks. Take all of this with you. Again, I feel so relaxed and like just chill right now. And I really hope you do too. Um, have a super weekend and I will see you next month. Take care, everybody.